are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. Welcome to Serious Growth Podcast. I'll be your host for the next few minutes. So my question is for you. Did you state your goal today? When you went before you went to the gym? Because if you didn't, you're not following the serious growth creed. That's some serious shit. Serious growth creed. It's not something that you just say. Just saying it doesn't make it happen. Saying it with intention does. That's the next step. And then going into the gym and making sure that you make it happen there. Okay, you you completed that one time. Only one time. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat forever. If you're the serious grocer, which I hope you are, then you do it forever. I've been doing it now for, I don't know, since I was 27 years of age. Somebody has a calculator out there. I am now 66 years old, which is mind-blowing. And I've been doing it ever since then, day in and day out. You know, I was I was uh, actually doing and implementing serious growth creed when I had my strokes. That didn't stop me. I mean, it slowed me down for sure. But it didn't stop me. So don't give me your shit that you're, you know, you have a hangnail or you have a headache or whatever. Practice it and and it's like a mantra. Do it every day. My 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 creed, my serious goal creed translates over to my the other stuff that I do in my work. Fortunately, I'm still staying in the industry where fitness and health and nutrition and all that good stuff, I get still get to do that. But uh, so when I walk into the gym, I have a stated goal of making every rep, every single rep, every set count. And we've talked about that before. That's certainly not easy by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it runs people off after the honeymoon phase is over, which is usually about at best three months. That separates the the wannabes from the ones that want to take that next step. But my state of goal outside the gym in on this podcast is to is to teach. It's to educate and it it's to motivate. That's the my state of goal here. And so hopefully I accomplish that. Um, when you, uh, when you go to the gym, are you a body builder or do you build your body? I'm not saying one's better than the other, but it's a different intensity. It's all relative. If you're that person that's building your body because you're going to the gym three days a week, you're fairly new to the you know, you're not competing, but you're really interested in building your body better. Maybe you want to, you know, tighten tone, condition, improve muscle endurance. Hey, that's all good stuff. It's it's all relative. But if you're the body builder, that person that wants to keep taking your, your um, intensity to the next level, that's another, that's another path that you go down. And where I'm really leading up to is when you go down that path, as strong as you think that you are, and I'm not talking about strength wise, as far as how much weight you can lift, I'm talking about mentally, because, you know, part of our serious growth creed is that we have warrior mindset. Just to go over, we have stewards, student of the game. This is the serious growth creed. You're a student of the game. You have discipline to the nth degree. You have warrior mindset, repetition is a mother of skill, and you question everything. That's the mantra that I'm talking about that, that we, we, we talk about every day. 
But if you're going down that path that you want to be a bodybuilder, then you need to keep taking the steps to keep getting the most out of your your training. And I can assure you as strong as mentally, this is where I was going, when it comes to that level of conditioning, you can't do it alone. And I should say that you actually can't do it alone and take it to that level. It's not, it's not, uh, anything is possible, but let me tell you something. Realistically, over time, it's not possible. There are going to be times that you can perform at that high level that I'm talking about, but to walk into that gym every single day and to perform, not, not if you're human, because, you know, we have a lot of, I don't know about you guys, but most of the time when I go to the gym, I'm not feeling it like to that level, kind of like I did today, surprisingly. Last night I didn't sleep well, got stuff in my mind, exciting, good stuff, kept me up. I mean, I, I trained today on little, very little sleep. I'm going to say maybe three hours, four hours at most. And I would have thought that I was going to really get my ass handed to me because I get it handed to me all the time anyway. It's just to different levels. But I thought maybe for sure I was going to get my ass handed to me. And I got to tell you something. It was one of those days in the gym. Maybe you guys can relate and girls that are out there serious growth thing. I was strong as shit. I was strong as hell. I, I don't know how to figure that. You know, the the physiology in my mind is really a mystery. It doesn't follow logic in, in some ways, you know, because of that, what I'm just saying. I was strong all the way through. And I would have thought the opposite. And I've also had that, that reverse that scenario. I've come in feeling good, rested, and my workouts fall a little flat. So you know what? As as the ideal is to, you know, have that great workout each and every time, but the reality is that you're not. And this is where I'm going with you have to have a spotter. You have to have a training partner. Now, you may not have to have that training partner depending on where you're at every single time, <clears throat> but I beg to differ. But I got to tell you, a training partner, uh, a spotter can make or break your training sessions. I see it all the time. And I would venture to say that so many of the spotters that are out there and the training partners are a liability more than they're an asset because of the little things that they do. You know, a lot of you guys that have been around enough, especially you silverbackers, you know, that spotters sometimes take the weight away from you. You know, they take they that little bit towards the end. They jerk it out of your hands to rack it. That shit really pisses me off because I know it's that stuff right there. It's that little, you know, it's a game of inches. Well, your training is a game of inches, that range of motion, uh, motion through your set. It's a game of inches, man. If you're a, a wannabe spotter or somebody who is um, inexperienced, you're taking that away from me. It's hard enough to get in there and to have the mindset and have the discipline and have the will to embrace the pain because that's exactly what you have to do. You have to embrace pain every time, every time you go in. Uh, Platts used to say we, the bodybuilders walk in fire, same idea, but you have to embrace that. And when some Yahoo slash training partner or some spotter takes that away from you, it may not seem like a big deal, but it's big as hell. It's significant, man. Especially when you multiply that shit over time. It's about paying attention to the little things that make a difference in the big things down the road. It shows up when you're on that stage and, and it's really close with that next competitor and they inch it out. They, they end up winning. It, it, look, you have to go back and analyze why you didn't win or what, how, and what you could have done better. It could be in your training partner. And now a word from our sponsor. 
Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief and the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. And you know, sometimes a training partner uh, and the spotter become, uh, you know, they're not really pushing you like they should because a, a training uh, partner, he plays different roles or she plays different roles. You know, they're there to get that little bit out of you, that little extra that you might not do on your own that particular day. You know, they're there to get you those last two or three reps. Not only that, but they got to be like, a, you know, kind of a pseudo shrink, if you will. And they got to know how to get that out of you, not only physically, but mentally. So does your training partner that your current training partner, do they know you well enough on that level that they can get not only the most out of you physically, but mentally? Because if they're not, they're not really helping you. They're more of a liability overall. And I do know it takes time to actually develop a good training partner. And if it was me and I, I do this, if somebody wants to train with me, I am doing like a, a mental, not only a mental, but I'm doing an interview on that person. And I'm especially in the beginning watching them. Because if I had to spend my time training them while I'm training myself, get out. I can't, I can't be around that right now. So for those of you that are out there training, and I urge you to enlist a, a really good training partner, interview them. Find out like how much you know, training that they've done. A lot of times you can tell, although it's not a, a tell, I'll tell, just by how they look. Surprisingly, sometimes I, when I see guys that are in really good shape, they really don't know how to spot that well. It's kind of like a, a coach. I've had coaches before because that's what a, a spotter and a, and a training partner is. They're kind of a coach, a shrink. Uh, you know, they actually are in there working out with you. But I, I've had coaches over the years where they were really, um, as athletes, they're phenom phenomenal athletes. And, but when it came down to, to helping and showing a team, being a spotter for a team if you if just think of it that way maybe it's a football coach you know when you go pass that information on so your team can perform better on the field that's kind of what a, a training partner is doing with you i ran across coaches who were great athletes but they weren't a really good coach because they couldn't um they couldn't figure out how to make their team play better on a consistent basis you see that's what a, a training partner does they help you uh, train better, perform better. So when you're, you know, part of our our serious growth creed is to, uh, you know, discipline to the nth degree. That nth degree is really important. You got to pay attention to every aspect of your training. What you have to pay the uh, pay attention to the weight training part of it, the cardiovascular conditioning part of it, the nutrition part of it, and your training partner part of it. That's part of your success. Or it could be the part that, yeah, you come up short. Don't discount that. I I think sometimes you know you have to to um, you have to train the trainer that you're that's actually working out with you. Um, I I think in in some cases when you have two people two bodybuilders that are at the same level, you can spot each other if you've been around long enough. Again, you know, first hand experience is. 
true knowledge. So I'm not saying that a couple of guys can't get together that really know they've been around for a long time, for a long time, that know how to spot to the nth degree. Okay, that doesn't just happen like anything else. Um, I'm not saying that you can't get a couple of guys that know how to, you know, they don't have to learn how to, how to, uh, how you train necessarily because they're that good. They've done it enough them t- their own selves. So when you're enlisting a training partner, understand who you have. Are you willing to spend time to, to train them? Because maybe they have potential. I mean, the, we have to learn somewhere. So I'm not saying, you know, discount the people, but I'm just saying that don't just have anybody spot you. That's kind of the point of this, this uh, conversation today on this uh, podcast. Pay attention to all the aspects. Make sure that you get a trainer that is an asset for you and not a liability. And you will see how that pays the dividends for you in your current workouts and then down the road when you're competing. Until next time, if you have any questions, guys, reach out. We have the Silverback Inner Circle. For those of you that are uh, in that uh, on that platform, uh, otherwise, reach out. And uh, again, my stated goal was to uh, teach you, ed- educate you, and hopefully motivate you. Hopefully, I did that. And if I didn't, shame on me. Until next time, guys, get serious growth. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at SeriousGrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.